Hey guys, Mohan Pobert here and in this shift we're going to talk about all about why capital is a must for your business and you can't grow unless you have access to capital. So this is the next shift. Now, what we talked about so far is first of all that you got to have the right business strategy, you got to have the right vision, the right mindset, the right accountability process, the right focus and, and I guess it's really important to have the right values because many business owners or entrepreneurs try to get into business to, to just make money out of it, to just have their selfish, um, I guess, reasons to, to even get into business, which I don't like at all. I don't think you'll ever be successful in business or anything in life if your reasons to get into to begin with are very selfish and it's not about going out there and impacting people and helping people. And your, your values, unless you really want to go out there and impact either your loved ones to begin with or in then or then i think that the biggest thing in the business the main reason for business to be alive is to impact customers and obviously the employees that you have in your business unless you have those values as fundamentals don't even get into business and i i don't want to personally want to help to people who who only have their selfish reasons as their first goal or values in life then we talked about after the vision we talked about having the right strategy to have the strategy to grow not just organically but by acquisition by basically implementing processes and systems that work for big corporations but do them in the small world and the fact that you don't need any capital or very little capital to literally go out there and buy seven figure businesses using other people money as we call and that's what we're going to talk about here in this um, shift and yeah obviously understand that with organic growth obviously have all the other departments going on if it's sales and marketing if it's operations if it's hr if it's the financial department that you have and you need to have roles and systems for each of those departments and only when you have those good fundamentals you can go out to the world and present yourself as the good business that you are everyone is on the same vision in your team and now with this shift you need to understand that you can't really grow to your level to the levels that you want or capable of unless you have access to capital so let's dive into that a little bit so it, we talked about it in the last videos about the fact that most businesses fail in their first five years 95 percent fail then in their first 10 years even if they survive the first five years they're going to fail in their first 10 years the main reason for businesses to shut down and liquidate their assets is lack of cash flow I don't care what business you have if you have access to unlimited amount of cash flow you can continue to operate forever like amazon for example they work i'm not sure if they're profitable already or they're not but they have access to capital so it doesn't matter they can keep operating forever and trust me uh bezos jeff bezos is wealthy enough to be able to sustain that business and take enough money for himself but what i'm saying is that it doesn't matter if your business isn't profitable but still have access to capital and cash flow, you can survive forever and build the wealth that you want. So as long as you have a process and systems to bring in capital on a consistent basis, on a continuing basis, so you never want to stop that. When you have access to capital, you can grow forever and your business is going to become the leader in their market. And again, it's not about, and I'm going to expand on that more, but forget about afraid or having that fear to dilute your equity because in the end of the day most business owners need to shut down their business because their ego because they want to own 100% of nothing basically or 100% of like a 50,000 a year business and most people don't know that they can still have the primary beneficiary of an owner and still be in control of their business even if they own like 30% they can still be responsible for all the decisions and the steps in their business. But again, would you rather own 100% of a 50,000 or even a seven figure a year business? Or would you rather own 30% in a billion dollar company? And that's what I want you to at least open your mind to do the fact that you don't need to be 100% shareholder all the time. But we're going to expand on that. You can still stay 100% shareholder all the time and bring in capital from different sources. But I don't want you to be too much against the fact that it's okay to dilute your equity to either bring in capital or to bring in advisors who can really help you take things to the next level either with strategic advice or with open doors to other people in their network who can really help you grow and just to name few options to go out there and raise capital you can go and bring capital from angel investors from venture capital firms from private equity firms and again obviously from your fff from friends fools and families and that's how most businesses start and you can go out there and buy an existing profitable literally seven figure business with that money alone like nowadays you can buy i'm telling you with fifty thousand dollars or one hundred thousand dollars you can buy a seven figure business 
and it's very doable because other than using all those sources that I just mentioned, you can go out there and use also debt financing, which is going out there and for example, if you want to grow by acquisitions, to use the acquisition target assets as a leverage to raise some debt, equity, some debt capital on those assets and then pay for that business. So, so many of those different opportunities that people are not even aware of. And again, access to capital will make sure that you're continuing to trade forever and you're not ending up like 95% of business owners who need to shut down their doors because they don't have capital. And lack of capital is what's going to basically, um, for many people, are not, is basically the reason for them not to even start in their entrepreneurial journey to either start a business or to buy one. And again, you don't need to start a business from scratch. Many people start from scratch and I see them wasting more money like they're wasting sometimes their life savings on an idea that have a very big chance of failing instead of going buy, going out there and buying an existing profitable established business that's existing for many, many years, already have track record, already have experience in the market and the chances of buying a business that's already existing for 5 or 10 or 15 years, the chances of that failing is much smaller than starting a business from scratch. And again, that's why when you already have a business to grow your business by acquisition, it's so much lucrative, so much better because it's not just about the revenues that you're buying. It's about access to their system, to their process. So for example, if you have a process to bring in clients organically, the business that you're buying, they have their process to bring in clients and they have their system that's already working that you can tap into from the moment of buying them. And it's also about the talent. Most businesses, big businesses out there, one of the reasons for them to grow by acquisitions is to get access to that amazing talent that all of those different businesses have. And when they buy that, those businesses, they can immediately get access to their founders, to their CEOs, to their CTOs, to whatever key departments they have. You can access to those people. And also, it's access to services and products and different things that to do them organically will take you so much longer. So, for example, if you have a supplement company and you want to always innovate and create new products and you always try to do them internally by spending so much money on research and, and developing the product and, and getting all those licenses. Instead, you can go and buy an existing business that already have good products that then you can immediately tap into those sources of products and sell them to the list of clients that you already have and vice versa, like I said last time. And the only way to do that is if you have access to capital. And again, it's not, it doesn't need to be your own capital. You don't need to have millions of dollars in the bank. Heck, you don't even need to have any money at all to buy businesses many times because there's enough assets in those businesses that you can leverage from different sources, from using OPM, from other people money, other people opportunities out there. Like I said, like some of those sources that I mentioned, there's so many different ways to raise capital if it's using debt financing or equity capital or mezzanine or cash flow lenders. There's so many different opportunities to go out there and access capital. And it's very similar to basically raise capital for buying a house. And if you have a house and you bought a house, you know that you can buy a house that isn't yours yet and raise capital on that house and even have that house that isn't yours yet as a, a collateral for the loan. And same goes with buying businesses. But obviously you need to understand the process. And unless you understand the process, you can, I mean, I know people who really screw up with this buying businesses stuff when they're signing personal guarantees. And if something happens to the business, you don't want to be in charge, right? So you want to make sure, and again, business is business. Everything can happen. So even when you're buying those businesses, you want to make sure that you're covered and you're only putting as collateral the businesses that you buy and you save on your end. So that's the shift about capital, guys. Remember, the only way for you to survive is always have access to capital and cash flow. That's the only reason for businesses to shut down and liquidate. Again, unless the owner just don't want to stay in the business and that's his, his own reasons. But I'm talking about someone who want to be in a business, who want to own a business and really want to expand, but he can't and he has to shut down the doors. The biggest reason for that is lack of capital. And you got to open your eyes to the fact that it's okay to go out there and raise capital. It's okay to leverage some of the assets out there. And it's okay to even dilute your shares if you're bringing enough capital and if you're bringing the right people on board as advisors, as board members who can open so many doors for you. Like the right people in your company can be the difference between you making just six or seven figure a year to you making eight or nine figures very, very fast just because you have access to the right people who can help you get there.